Hey guys, the Perfect G here bringing you a next guide for sizes 5 up to and around 10 man teams. We're going to go over the basics of necks and exactly how to tackle them in the current best way known. Some of these metas may change depending on how big your team is and how good you are at tackling the mechanics. For instance, it's believed now that the final phase of necks, the Zaro's phase, is weak to crush. But bringing in melee switches to make this worth it could be difficult for a lot of players, so we're going to focus on the main strategies used by most teams currently. If you find any use in this guide, feel free to send it to your friends and consider Consider subscribing for more Perfect G content in the future. Enjoy! First we'll go over the gear setups. On the left you'll see the cough tank. This person will be the designated player to tank the first special on the first phase. The next gear setup is the hammer roll. Most players will use this setup if they aren't the cough tank. They'll usually use one hammer spec at the start of the first and final phases. The final setup is the DPS roll. This player usually claws at some points during the fights to speed up certain phases, but it's totally not necessary. It's believed that the Zarite crossbow is better than Tebow, but Tebow is better than any alternatives but an ACB will work fine. Although there are designated hammer rolls, each setup has a hammer which is mainly used to release team members from an ice prison that we'll go over later in the video. Nex has 3400 HP, and every time you bring Nex down by 680 HP, it phases into the corresponding minion and then the following phase afterwards. I'll be breaking down each phase and how they work one by one. Some general knowledge is that each phase has two unique special attacks and each of the four minions have their own abilities as well. Each of of these special attacks has five auto attacks in between them, meaning Nex will do five auto attacks before she does the next special. I've noticed sometimes when the phase changes, like after you kill a minion, this counter of five auto attacks is reset, and a special will usually occur immediately. This isn't always the case, and it may be a glitch or oversight by Jagex, so maybe they change it in the future. Personally, I hope not, as it adds some surprise to the fight, but for now, assume each phase will start with a special. In each of the phases, we'll go over the first and then the second special, and then we'll go over the auto attacks that happen in between those specials, and then we'll go over what the minion does. What's important to know is that if the phase ends with the first special, then the next phase will start with the second special, and if the phase ends with the second special, the next phase will start with the first special. This will make more sense as we go over the phases. So for now, let's start with phase one. The first phase is the smoke phase. The two specials on this phase are a cough attack and a charge attack. The cough attack is the first attack Nex does, and you can see it coming when Nex says, this attack is similar to Burn With Me in the Ohm fight, but can be a bit more punishing. If a player is within a 3x3 area of a coughing player, they'll also cough. Coughing players have their highest accuracy stat and their prayer drains quickly, so wearing a Slayer Helm when you're given the cough will limit the special to 3 coughs instead of 5 and will drain significantly slower. Each team will have a cough tank in a certain position, which we'll go over when we go through the rolls. The second special is a charge attack that you can see coming when Nex says, and then next we'll look towards one of the four bridges and charge down the lane towards the center, hitting anyone on that lane and in the middle of the room. You simply have to move off of that lane onto another bridge to dodge this attack. If you're hit by it, your overhead prayers are turned off, and just like any attacks we'll go over during the fight, you can just turn your prayers back on instantly. So let's go over the fight. As next summons the minions, all players will stand in melee distance in the middle of the room. The cough tank on smaller teams can stand on melee distanced designated sides by themselves, but if everyone is at the the same distance from Nex, she'll target whoever has the lowest mage defense for her cough. If any of the players run away from Nex, she can drag them closer with a unique attack that she does in between her auto attacks. This isn't a special attack, but it only occurs on the first phase. Having the cough tank in melee distance means they should bring a melee switch as well, such as Torva, Inquisitors, Bandos, or even a Torso. This will significantly lower their mage defense, allowing them to tank the cough. An alternate position for cough tank, and possibly better for bigger teams, is to have the cough tank positioned diagonally by Fumus on this tile. Because you are the farthest person away, the cough will always target you. However, because you're so far away, Nex can't use her attack to drag you into melee distance. As long as you have a Tebow, you can utilize this method. The only downside is that if Nex targets you to attack, she can leave the center and chase you down, which is why this is only particularly useful for bigger teams. When the fight begins, Nex will have a moment of immunity to damage. Everyone must pray mage when the fight starts or the cough may target them instead. When Nex says, then she becomes vulnerable to damage. The hammer rolls will hit the boss. It's believed now that you can only drain her defense by so much, so you only need one hammer to land. The reason we all stand in melee distance is so there's a higher chance for her to use melee instead of mage. Her mage hits all of the players that she can reach, 
but her melee only hits one person. We'll be using this melee distance strategy for all phases except for the shadow and blood phases. Continue hitting the boss, and five attacks after her cough, she'll do her second special. She'll say, and then turn her body towards one of the four bridges. Then, as she charges down the lane, she'll say, Simply move away from where she's looking when you see there is above her head, and if you get hit by this and your prayers are turned off, simply turn them back on and get back into your melee distance tile. These specials, with 5 autos between them, will continue until you knock her down to 2720, which is 680 damage. When her HP hits 2720, she will say, She'll still do her specials and 5 attacks, but now everyone will head towards Fumus. You'll want to make sure that you're alone in your 3x3 area in case she does another cough attack. Having a long distance weapon like T-Bow or a crossbow will make this much easier. If you get the cough by accident, just make sure not to run near anyone. Now Fumus, the minion of the smoke phase, will use Smoke Barrage. This has a chance to poison anyone that it targets, which is the only time during the fight you have a chance to become poisoned. When the minion's dead, phase 1 is complete and we move on to the shadow phase. As phase 2 starts, next we'll say This signifies the start of the phase and you must pray range. There are some mechanics that we'll go over that will allow you to turn off prayer, but that's a bit risky right now, so just keep it up. The two special attacks during Shadow are the black holes under most players' feet, similar to Nightmare, and the second special attack is the Embrace Darkness special, which will cause massive damage if you're near Nex for too long. The first special with black holes is signified by Nex saying, you have to step off of the black holes to avoid damage. After 5 auto attacks, she'll use her darkness special, signified by her saying, You must stay away from Nex during this part to avoid damage. Her 5 attacks between each phase are basic ranged attacks. The closer you are to Nex, the more damage they do. If you're 10 tiles away, she'll only be able to hit you up to 3 damage. This is why the boss has a chasing mechanic. If you're chosen as the tank by Nex, simply run away. However, you don't want to run towards the second minion in the northeast. Drag Nex away from the minion so when that second minion, Umbra, is vulnerable, she won't be nearby to harass the team. You can actually take off your armor to force her to tank you, but generally most of the team will be able to kite her away from the minion anyway, so that may be a strategy for certain team sizes. At 2040 HP, Umbra will become vulnerable. Umbra, the minion of the shadow phases, uses shadow barrage. This spell will have a chance to drain your attack stat, also symbolized in the chat box by saying, you have been blinded. This will hit for somewhere in the 20s if you pray range, and can hit over 50 if you aren't praying range. This attack is not avoidable, and seems to not have any cooldown, so you want to kill this minion as quickly as possible. Once Umbra is defeated, next will begin the blood phase. At the start of phase 3, next will say, you want to pray mage throughout this phase. Her two special attacks during this phase is a blood siphon where she summons reavers and a blood sacrifice where she chooses a random player near her as a blood tithe. The first special where she summons reavers will be signified by her saying, when this happens, she'll crouch down and have immunity to damage. She'll actually heal anything you hit her for until a tiny, nearly invisible orb is absorbed into her body, and she stands back up. You'll want to kill the Reavers quickly and get back to DPSing the boss. The second special is a blood sacrifice signified by her saying, if you're the one chosen, a bright red text in chat will say, Nex has marked you for a blood sacrifice. Run! To avoid this damage, simply run 7 tiles away from her line of sight and you're free. If you're hit by this, it will sap half of your HP and heal her for 10 times the amount of damage dealt. Her 5 auto attacks between these specials is a blood barrage, so just like smoke phase, we don't want to clump together. Stay in your own 3x3 area, as her blood barrage is an AoE or area of effect attack. You can go as close to her as you like during this part, so it's very easy to do. If she summons a second set of reavers, you can usually ignore them as your team will likely DPS her down to 1360 to proc Kruer, the blood minion. You have to play this by ear, but in a team of Tebows, this is easy to do around 1800 HP. If you don't think you can, simply kill the reavers and continue hitting the boss. Once her HP hits 1360, Kruer, the blood minion, will become active, and just like all the other phases, next will continue to hit with her 5 attacks and specials, but this minion will also shoot blood barrages. So stay in your own three by three and kill Kruer quickly. You want to prioritize the minion even if there are reavers on the field. Once Kruer is defeated, next we'll begin the ice phase. At the start of phase four, next we'll say, 
You want to pray mage throughout this phase and stay in melee distance the entire time. Her two specials are a burst of ice surrounding her and a prison of ice that she shoots at a single player. The first special where she bursts ice from her body will be signified by her saying, all players have to do is simply back up one tile from melee distance to avoid this damage. If you are hit by this special, you'll take a substantial blow and your prayers will be turned off. Simply turn them back on. The second special is a prison of ice signified by her saying, She'll target one player and shoot a 3x3 ice prison around them. That player's prayers are turned off and another player on the team has to free them. That other player on the team must equip a crush weapon, which is why all rolls bring a warhammer, and click the stalagmite until it breaks. You can actually use your foot to take the stalagmite down, but it could fail. The success of freeing your homie is increased the more crush accuracy you have. Always hashtag free the homie. Her 5 auto attacks that she does between specials are an ice barrage. These attacks will not freeze you as long as you're praying mage. If you aren't praying mage, say because you run out of prayer, got contained in her ice burst, or you weren't freed by one of the homies, you'll be frozen for 20 seconds. When Nexus hit down to 1360, the ice minion Glacies will activate. Glacies will also shoot ice barrages on the team, which have a high chance to freeze players for 20 seconds as well. I'm almost never caught by this, so it's safe to say it isn't really that effective. Just watch out for next attacks and make sure that you free your team, and when the fourth minion dies, we end Enter the final phase of Nex. Nex will say, Make sure you stay in melee distance during this part. The big brains in the community will soon figure out exactly who she targets for tank, but if she happens to look at you, simply pray melee. If she isn't looking at you, pray mage. As soon as this phase starts, she'll use Soul Split, which is an overhead curse from RS2 that gives her HP based on the damage dealt. You want to respec Nex here with your hammers as early as possible. It seems like Nex takes longer to kill on this phase if other players die, and it may be a hidden mechanic to prevent players from boosting. However, as long as everyone's alive, you should be okay. She will eventually change her overhead from soul split to deflect melee. Any melee damage she takes will be absorbed as HP and reflected back to the attacker. So if you're a DPSer or in the future if you bring melee for this phase, make sure not to hit with melee on this part. A method that some people utilize is her failsafe mechanic. A long time ago, Wooks was able to solo her and one of the mechanics to do so was to step under the boss to trap her. If she targets a player and can't reach them because they're stepping under her, she'll eventually dash away towards the middle of the room. This limits the amount of damage teams take while only losing some of the DPS. In bigger teams, I wouldn't recommend doing this because you won't take much damage because she just dies fast. However, if she dashes away, simply run back to her melee distance and finish the fight wherever she dashed to. When next dies, she'll use the Curse's version of Retribution. You simply have to run three tiles or more away from her body and then the loot will appear under your feet. You beat the boss. Congratulations. If this helped you so far, consider subscribing and checking out some of my other PVM guides. Now, I just want to give you some final tips. Earlier, I mentioned her starting with different special attacks. The first special attack of each phase and the second specials of each phase are actually connected. If the phase ends with the first special that I described, the next phase will start with the second special I described. If the phase ends with the second special I described, then the next phase will start with the first special I described, all of their corresponding phases. So, for example, if the smoke phase 1 ends with a cough attack, the shadow phase 2 will start with an embrace darkness attack. However, if the smoke phase 1 ends with a charge attack, then the shadow phase will actually start with a darken my shadow attack. This is the same for all phases, which means if the shadow phase ends with a darken my shadow attack where black holes spawn from underneath you, the first special in the blood phase won't be reavers. It'll be the blood sacrifice. This is important to know so you know whether you can attack attack her at the start of the blood phase or if you should wait a few ticks for the reavers to come out. Another thing to mention is that when using the altar in the next arena, you can use it in the middle of the fight and if you equip an ancient item, it will heal all of your orbs to full. The only thing that won't return are your drained stats. The final tip is that you could actually use an alt to supply you with drops if you're doing smaller teams, as you may not get 40 KC during the instance. The KC is pretty easy to AFK and obtain by killing spiritual mages which count as multiple KC per kill. However, if your team is getting around 5 to 7 KC per instance, you'll most likely have 40 or more Zaro's KC and can just teleport out and instantly re-enter the bank area. Just remember your ancient item before you tele out so you don't get piled by the mobs. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do hope this video helps. If any metas drastically change, I'll leave a pinned comment or edit the description for future updates. If this helped, make sure to smash the like button and consider subscribing for more PVM guides and Perfect G content in the future. Thanks for watching.